The topic of data visualization is incredibly broad, and there's many good books written about it. We'll take a look at some basic plots and introduce terminology that sets us on the path to using these tools effectively. It's tempting to think we don't need to study visualization. After all, we can easily read a bad plot and still figure out what's going on. In fact, your next forum posting for this course should be to find a bad plot from any source, upload it to the forums, and identify what's bad about it. Others in the forum can comment on it too. It takes a lot of work to make a good plot in computer software. You have to substantially tweak the default settings. Why make a good plot though? People have to make decisions based on our engineering plots, and if we can make that decision easier for them, we can save time, and we also look good. Many of you will find yourself developing plots that are used by people in mission-critical areas. Think of a nuclear power plant, or someone processing very valuable material, or making decisions from that plot that might impact safety. If they are making these split-second decisions, they have to be made unambiguously and with confidence. The first plot we consider is a time series plot. These are two-dimensional, with a horizontal time axis or sequence order. The vertical axis represents the numeric value of the data. Now our eye is good at dealing with high-density data. Our brains quickly process this and we pick up sinusoids, spikes and other patterns. We also separate noise from the signal and we quickly disregard outliers which contaminate the data. But why make the brain work more than necessary? Remember, fast, quick decisions must be made with confidence. Let's show a few examples of good and bad time series plots. The first one shows the CPU temperature over time. Pause the video now and identify all the bad features in the plot. There are quite a few of them. Bad labeling on the x-axis is just the first. The second is the hard-to-see difference between the red raw data and the smooth green line. Always ask yourself with any plot, what is its intention? My best guess for this plot is that it's monitoring CPU temperature. And when monitoring something, we not only want to track the trend, but also the variability. Here's a redrawn version of the same plot. I've not changed anything. I've only shifted the colors around. Now the noise becomes apparent and the main trend stands out. The message of the plot is quite different to the prior version. This idea of changing a plot's message can be done with any type of plot, not just a time series plot. Here's another bad time series plot when we have multiple lines that cross over each other. It makes picking out trends very hard. Pause the video again and determine any trends you notice in this plot. Did you notice the correlation between blue and green lines? They move up and down together. Did you notice the inverse correlation between the orange line and the others? When the orange line goes up, the others go down. This next plot shows the same data but on three separate axes. The trends are far more apparent now. It took me a while though to redraw this plot. I've also not used color because we can't assume the plot will ultimately be shown on a device capable of color display. And we can't assume the reader can differentiate all the colors that were used. Now we can take this data and compress it even smaller we call these spark lines. I highly recommend reading this web link to learn more about them. Spark lines are showing up far more on various websites and software tools. They're an incredibly useful device for showing data on cell phones and small tablet displays. They exploit the fact that our eye can distinguish 250 points per linear inch or about 650 points per square inch. That's our eye's resolution ability. Now, spark lines are not an entirely new invention. 
they have been used on medical charts for decades. Further advice on time series plots is to use a constant spacing on the x-axis. This helps to keep the interpretation of the plot consistent. If you need to zoom in on a particular feature of the plot, rather redraw it a second time, illustrating the zoomed-in portion on its own linearly spaced axis. One other way that people are dishonest with time series plots that show money is when they omit to rescale the plot for inflation. When data are shown over many years, the effect of inflation should be accounted for. Think about that the next time you look at a stock price chart or someone tries to sell you a mutual fund. Visiting this link leads to a website that shows this quite nicely. Here automotive sales appear to have consistently increased year on year between 1970 to 1995. The Consumer Price Index, CPI, shown in red, is a measure of inflation. It has also increased. If we divide the raw data by the CPI value, we get a more honest view of the data. Now we see the sales between 1970 and 1980 were mostly flat. That's because of a prolonged recession during that period. The author of this website shows how to rescale the data in a spreadsheet. Now if you're astute, you'd have noticed a seasonal effect. Higher sales in the summer months than the winter months. Notice how the seasonality is emphasized once the data are rescaled. One final piece of advice is to always provide some context to the user. The first plot shows the rising trend in the stock price, but with more and more context, we get an honest reflection of what has happened. Remember, time series plots are about historical data, so you must provide enough of it to give the person using your plot the insight to make an accurate decision. So that's it for a summary of time series plots. Avoid using colors to convey your message, show data on separate axes when possible, and don't forget to exploit the ability of the human eye to pick out detail and use high-density graphics.